All right, motherfuckers. What the fuck was that, man? That was incursion. Warrior of destruction. Fuck yeah, dude. Love it, man. Let's call these motherfuckers up right the fuck now and uh, see what the fuck is going on in their world, man. Hang on one second. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. 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 <laughs> Incursion. What the fuck is going on, guys? Fuck yeah. How are you? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> we're, we're, I'm just happy I can. I'm happy I can say fuck right now and not have to right. worry about it. <laughs> you you kind of set the bar for us, you know. <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah, dude. Killer, killer fucking music, man. I love it, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to tell us, man. Like, uh, how did you guys come up with this? With, with these crazy tunes, man. How, how, what's the story? Give us, give us everything, man. Max, we were uh, very much into uh, Rush and Venom and Merciful Fate hardcore. And, uh, and hardcore. And I was like, we could write a concept record. I mean, we we can, you know, what. Uh, the Queensryche EP had come out and we were like, we were just like, oh, we should put out an EP. It just felt like the right thing to do. And then we sort of broke up and now we are back and we got uh, Stone and Steve and uh, it, it, it just sort of came together that way. We just were looking at like the, like a, a, a good succinct way to, to, to look at the you know the broad strokes of what we do as a band, and we were we were originally active from eighty two to eighty six. So I mean we were kind of coming out of the late seventies, early eighties, and the, the the British metal that was happening and the hardcore, and that's kind of where we're, our heads were at. You know, and then the stuff on the west coast that was happening with Metallica and Slayer, and um, as, you know, Max mentioned Queensrÿche and all that stuff. You know, the shrapnel stuff and the Mike Barney stuff that was happening. Hell so yeah. We're very much, you know, a product of that you know, time period. And uh, when, when we reformed in 2018 and got, you know, we back in the day, we didn't have the right singer. And we were all, we kind of disbanded in 86 because of that in a way. And uh, when, when we, you know, got, got back together in 2018, Max knew you know, knew Steve and he was, there was the voice that we were always searching for. It all just fell back together. And then in a way stone as well, just kind of fell into it. Everything just kind of happened. You know, it was meant to, it was meant to meant to be meant to exist in the universe. Finally. Hell yeah. Now I haven't heard the, uh, the original demos or anything. So I was wondering, have you guys always have you guys always kind of had this sound that, that you're you know because you're definitely in the new wave of traditional heavy metal right now with what's going on but you know I was thinking about it, I'm like fuck if these guys have been uh, if you've had the same sound since the beginning you you were kind of like way ahead of the game actually but I was just wondering like was it did it sound like this in the beginning yeah. It did. We, we 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 pretty much sound the way we sound. Like myself, Michael, and, and Buddy were are, are pretty pretty true to what what we are as musicians. So it, this is kind of like we're you know you'll hear the we're going to start recording the album in May at the end of May. Uh, we're in pre production right now, but yeah, this is pretty much what we sound like. This is it. Yeah, I mean, I can I can tell you from my side, being the newest guy that came in the picture, I got those demos. And the only difference between what's heard on those demos and what's heard on the final product is the production quality and the voice. Yeah, that's awesome. Back in the back in the day, we were never we never had the opportunity to fully realize, you know, the <clears throat> 20 plus songs that we had. And, you know, we. So it's kind of interesting 35 plus years later to then take them into, we played them live. We used to play, we played <clears throat> clubs in South Florida and, and, you know, the hardcore shows and the metal shows. And uh, we never really had the opportunity, you know, it's a whole different medium in the studio and to think of them and, and you know, as far as how we want the, the songs to convey. So now we have the opportunity and the means to, 
to do that and it's it's really uh an, an interesting experience you know to, to birth yeah. song to birth material that <laughs> was written 35 years ago that you know so <laughs> dude that's awesome man so so you guys were doing this long before it was cool man <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah we we've got some surprises but we have this is we're going to I think uh, if you like the EP, you're gonna you're really gonna like the album. And what Steve's like, what Steve's doing to the songs is really great. And still, like we're all coming together. It's gonna be really, really a uh, fun record. Yeah, the, the newer stuff is is a little a little more high energy, um, and uh, it's, it's 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 still the same sound, but uh, um, it's it's not a concept album. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, the new stuff is 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 really 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 good. Faster, yeah. faster, and harder. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! We can't wait to hear it for sure. Uh, another question I got to ask you, man, about the album art. I love, love, love the way that I mean the way that it looks on the vinyl record too. It's it's beautiful, man. Uh, Thank can, you. can you tell us about that? Like, uh, who did that, and how did that happen? Um, Philip Lavery, uh, did the album cover. He, you might know him from the, uh, creator album covers. He did the first four or five, uh, creator album covers. And he did, um, uh, Celtic Frost's Morbid Tales. And we basically, uh, you know, it's like we, I'm from the philosophy that a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So, <laughs> we took a, we took a shot and reached out to him and asked him if he'd be interested. This is before we had a deal or anything. We were still like trying to figure out how this was going to come out. Uh, and we reached out to him and said, "Hey, would you consider doing a record for?" Uh, an indie band that doesn't have a record deal. <laughs> um, and you know, he was just, I, we, we sent him the song, we sent him like roughs of the record, uh, and he dug it and he, he had an idea that he, he sent us a sketch and from there we, uh, we, we refined it and, and then, he, you know, he, he just said, yes, it was, it was, you know, it's like wow. never, never be afraid to ask somebody something, yeah. even if you think, you know, it's, if it's out of your reach, cause there was no, um, legitimate reason why he would have said yes, other than he digging the record or something like that. Cause we were like, just at the time we were just like guys with like, I, we just only sent him like two of the songs and it was just sort of like, yeah, this is it. We sent him, I think we sent him Guiding Faith and Kingdom of Dead. And he was like, I dig it. And uh, so we've been really grateful to for him to um, be involved with us and, and like just sort of spur us on because it was the first, it was really the first, uh, inkling that we kind of had something that people would be interested in hearing. He, he sent us the sketch, and it was the hunter. Like we, like that's the guy, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, it was him. Yeah, yeah. He is he is he is hunting some serious shit too, man. With the fucking, <laughs> got the battle axe and everything, man. I love it, dude. I love it, man. Yeah, it, yeah. It's like the old saying, you know, I mean, it, it can't hurt to ask, you know, and I mean, that's that's a really cool story, though. I mean, like that is some that's some fucking heavy metal royalty right there, too. You know, like creator. Most certainly. Celtic Frost, man. Jesus. Yeah, most certainly. We were we were we are we've we've been uh, fortunate to be uh, surrounded by some really great people from artwork to record label and it's been it's just been really really great the, York, you can engineering i mean a mix of you know your you know like Chris, just Chris from Ford. every aspect of it has been we've been really lucky yeah the sound quality of this record is uh i mean it's, it's through the roof man it sounds top notch um can you tell us a little bit about that like for all the gearheads out there i'm sure they're wondering what kind of equipment and stuff like that you guys are using to get these sounds? 
Well, I mean, I think a lot of it goes to Steve's voice, but uh, we, you know, we're, we were plugging in the Marshalls and, you know, we have like, I, uh, uh, Buddy's got a Tama kit and, you know, I'm, I'm playing an ESP and Michael, I, I forget what kind of guitar you were playing. It's a strat with humbuckers, basically, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I was. I just used the the standard it body. You know, I p- pulled out the the P bass, and if it's good enough for Steve Harris, it's good enough for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, man. We're pretty old, old school and classic in our our what we're doing. You know, no three different vocal mics in two different states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two different kinds of software, two different kinds of operating systems. <laughs> Stone, we're, we're, Stone's an engineer. He can talk about the technical uh, aspects of Chris's Chris yeah. shirts out back. Yeah, around. yeah we uh, the the record was was recorded. It was tracked at Alpaca Studios uh, here in Central Florida by Chris Short, uh, and that's actually how I came into the fold. Was I've been a friend of Chris's for a long time, and. Uh, Max and uh, and everybody came in and they needed a player and uh, I got you know hooked up with them uh, after doing some other sessions over there with Chris and coming from that same kind of background you know we're we're all kids of the eighties metal scene and I was in in Western New York playing in Buffalo hardcore bands and Buffalo thrash metal bands and you know the the guys from Cannibal Corpse and Deicide and all those bands are are mm-hmm. good fucking friends and. Uh, it was a cool opportunity because, you know, like you said, there's there's a new wave of this style of music that's coming back again. Oh, big time. And there's a yeah. And and, and there's a bunch of cats that want to hear, you know, new stuff and, and nothing against any of the old time bands that are still out there doing it. Their music is fucking great. But, you know, people are always looking for something new. And I think with this EP and with this band they have that sense of both you know you you're listening to something that you would have listened to in 1987 you know but it came out with today's technology so the sounds are crisper and you know steve's vocals are are brighter in the mix because of the way that we were able to record things and the way that it was mixed and everything like that so it's like taking taking the idea of a record that you wanted to do in 1987 and saying, fuck it, we're going to do it today and doing it and having the, uh, again, having the technological abilities that recording studios have today. Not that there's a lot of shit on the record because there isn't what you hear is what we fucking played. There's, there were no machines used in the processing of this, there's and no there's, auto tune. There's no there's auto tune. No, yeah, <laughs> there's there's no fucking there's no auto tune. There's no you know, and a lot of the songs were a couple takes <clears throat> and they were done. So yeah. it was recorded with the same mindset that you would have recorded when yeah. you were you know seventeen, eighteen years old with a five hundred dollar budget, just with you know slightly higher budget and <laughs> much better equipment. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, yeah, no reamping on this. No, record. no, none. No, <laughs> no digital shit on it. What you hear is strings and fucking speakers. I believe, and your, I believe and your bass amp was even mic stone. It was it, yeah. absolutely. There were mics awesome. in front of amps. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's you. You there know, were tubes it's, cooking. You know, there's nothing there. virtual about it. Yeah. No. No. And, and, and then we got. Uh, we we were. Uh, a band in Nashville that we're friendly with called uh, Dark Hound. Um, he, he uh, Jorg had mixed their record, and we were trying to find somebody to mix ours. And he said, He's really busy because he's doing this Anvil record, but maybe he's at the tail end of it. And, you know, because your produced, uh, engineered, and uh, mixed and mastered the uh, Legal at Last record for Anvil, mm. and and he was uh, and you, we sent it to him, and Jorg was like, ah, we um, I've got I've got two weeks more to do with Anvil. If you guys can wait. <laughs> if you guys if you guys can wait, I can mix and master it over Christmas. 
And we were like, uh, I think we can wait. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah, he did. The, he did the last two Anvil records. Actually. Yeah. He did one before as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely cool, man. That is that is definitely worth waiting for for sure, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, the sound. I mean, it, it's definitely it sounds live. It sounds analog. It sounds very natural. Um, when, when you're especially when you're listening to uh, the vinyl, you know, on the on the uh, on the turntable, cool. it sounds like if, to me, it, it makes me feel like I'm in the room with you guys, and I'm sitting there in the middle of all your amps in front of the drums. Yeah, and I, can, I can feel it, man. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We 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 we, we uh, like we wanted it to sound like us, and we wanted it to you know we we think that the way we come together is kind of uh, is we like you know we kind of like the way that that feels, and and we're we're not trying to be something we're not. So we're we're at a place where we can confidently do what we have to do to make this work. So I think that's, that, that's been really, um, we've been fortunate. We've been real fortunate. And, and, you know, the response is, you know, that's been pretty insane. So what's it like to sit back and listen to something that you guys were creating so long ago, like you said, you know, but like here it is now in, in this form. What is that like, man? Like, like, how does that feel? It's pretty mind blowing. It's cathartic to say the least, and for me at least, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 it was a long time coming, but I think, uh, I I I think we we all knew, like at least me, Michael, and 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 Buddy, the drummer who wasn't able to make it tonight. I think we just knew that we had to do something with this stuff, and. We were just, uh, we were fortunate that we were all, you know, still alive and kicking and making music still. So it was easy for us to get together and get it back up to snuff. And it really, it really seemed like it was, it just was the right time too. like, as, as Stone mentioned, there's a whole, you know, not that we even planned it, but there's, a, you know, there's a whole scene with the new wave of traditional heavy metal and we fit right into that. Um, with an authenticity that maybe a lot, some of the bands involved don't have. We, you know, we have that authenticity, and our heads are coming from that place. You know, today with what we do, it's that's that's still at the root of everything. So um, it's it just the timing was just it couldn't have been a better, besides a, besides a pandemic, the timing couldn't have been. Uh, it's a good point. Better. Nothing on this record was forced. Hmm. It was all it was all well thought out before it before it hit uh, tape so and, and we weren't like oh we have to make it sound like this right. this was like that's just what we sound like yeah, yeah there was right. there was nothing contrived about it you know again for me listening to the demos and, and learning the songs from what they did back in the 80s and that being what you hear on the recording it is 100 percent organic and natural and authentic and exactly what this band is and that's how the next album is going to be yeah <laughs> same I way think, i think max and i definitely from the beginning you know when we were first got together and we're writing i mean we we have a pretty clear and you know with buddy and then as well bringing in stone and steve we have a pretty clear vision of what we are and we don't really need to stray from that because it's what we it's who we are so we we stay true to that everything else will just make sense you know you know i was thinking uh you know the the new wave of traditional heavy metal has definitely become a big thing especially like in the last year or so i've noticed that it's you know it's just exploding man there's all these bands coming out that are that are doing the you know the old school style of sound and uh i can only imagine you know that whenever this pandemic is over and the festivals and everything start coming back, you know, there's probably going to be some sort of themed fe festival for that, you know, like, because we have like the Maryland Death Fest and we have the, the Doom Fest, you know, like, it's only a matter of time before there's a traditional heavy metal fest, you know what I mean? And uh, I think you guys would definitely, definitely uh, be able to uh, to get in there, man, for sure. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We we we've 
we're already starting to get phone calls about stuff. So <laughs> we, you know, we're, 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 we're chomping at the bit for that. That's going to be um, pretty fun. It's, it, it, we, we can't wait, you know, but you know, we, we will, we, we're ready. We're, we're ready. Whenever the, whenever they release the hounds, we're going to be part of that pack. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, I got some questions for you guys coming in from the listeners, man. Uh, JMCT wants to know, what's your favorite drink, alcohol or not? Uh, beer. <laughs> Any beer? Uh, just rye, beer. Rye whiskey for Michael. You know, <laughs> good, uh, good Irish whiskey over here. Uh, I'm a, a vodka cranberry guy. Max. <laughs> Nice. Next, yeah. next question. Uh, what's the craziest thing you guys have seen on stage? Uh, Max. Oh, <laughs> how, how much time do we have here? It happened on the stage or from the stage? <laughs> that we've seen from the stage. Either so one. Either one. He's right there. <laughs> uh, for me, there was a uh, young lady who uh, who was right in front of me flipping me off and spitting on me all night long, telling me how much I sucked, <laughs> telling me how much I, you know, she fucking hated me and everything else. And Jeez. it was great. At the, at the end of the show, I leaned down and I said, thanks for your fucking money and walked away. So <laughs> that, one, that one always kind of sticks out to me. And the most, the most rock and roll thing for me was there's a club in, in Miami. That is one of the few that are still there. Churchill's pub. It's a, it's like a punk English pub in little Haiti. And I, there was a bunch, there's, you get a lot of sailors, used to get a lot of sailors there from the port. And there was a drunk sailor that stumbled all the way across the bar while we were, uh, the, the, while we were playing towards the stage. And when he got to the front of the stage, he proceeded to projectile vomit <laughs> all over everything, all over us, basically, on the front of the stage. Fuck. That was rock and roll, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, Cameron Landers <laughs> from the band Rock and Roll Villain Society wants to know, what's the first album you ever bought? Oh, yeah. Um, I rode to Kmart on my bike and bought Bark at the Moon. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Kiss Alive 1. Man, I got to say it was a... Uh, it was like a KTEL Beatles collection that I saw on TV <laughs> that I f made my mom. I had Kiss, I had all the Kiss records and the Teddy Ridge records, but actually bought it was a Beatles record, believe it or not. It was uh, Kiss Destroyer for me. Man, what a record. Yeah. Nice. What a record. Those are all cooler ones than mine, man. Mine was uh, Slippery When Wet from Bon Jovi, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We still love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it opened the gates, man. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, right. I will say the record that changed everything for me was buying Iron Maiden's first record. You know, I bought it because of the cover. I was like, this has got to be good. And my whole world changed the second I hit play on that. Yeah, that's how I run videos. <laughs> I just look at the cover. This has got to be good. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. It doesn't work every time, but it usually will work for you. I, I remember yeah. those days, man, going to the record store and just uh, flipping through the records and whatever, you know, whichever, whatever looked cool. Like I remember buying uh, Ozzy's uh, Speak of the Devil just because the, the cover. cover, you know, he was on there with the fucking blood in his mouth and everything. I was like, what the fuck is this? Had to have it, man, and it just blew my mind. That's that's something you just don't get scrolling through your phone, you know. No, you don't get that. You right. don't get that experience of a, a twelve inch square piece of fucking cardboard with you know a half naked chick on it or something like that to to look at, and your your thirteen year old mind goes, "Fuck, my parents are gonna hate this. I gotta have it," you know. <laughs> that Ohio Players Fire did that for me. Yeah. <laughs> this has got to be good. <laughs> She's oiled up with a hose. This is got yeah. for different reasons. That was a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably yeah. why some of us are here. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely spank material. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah! 
All right, next question. Uh, Lady Red wants to know, have you ever played in any haunted places? Well, we played the, the the place that we used to play in Florida most often had like a long history. It was kind of like a, from the inside, it was kind of like a shining kind of place. It was like a dilapidated building and Art Deco. Yeah, it was very Art Deco, but I don't know if it was haunted, but we did have some creepy shit happen there sometimes. <laughs> it was basically a bar in the bottom of a vagrant hotel, you know, and so the hotel was itself was uh, was interesting. Flynn's, Flynn's Ocean 71. It's now a Art Deco Burger King, if you go to that address. <laughs> <laughs> you get a satanic burger from there. Yeah, exactly. The burger is probably haunted. The Burger King's haunted for sure. Yeah. To go with your uh, little Nas X Satan sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, she who, can't, who can't live without those? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can give you, and this is an earlier question, but I just thought of this since we mentioned Flynn's. Incursion was playing at Flynn's once, and a complete bar brawl broke out. Yeah. With a guy, complete with a guy carrying another guy over his head and threw him through the front door of the club. And we had to get all, a whole riot broke out. It's like someone throws a punch and they miss and hit, hit someone. And then the whole bar was fighting and we had to get our gear off the stage. And that's probably Incursion's weirdest stage show experience. <laughs> it's not a good show until somebody breaks their nose. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Metal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, she she also wants to know uh, what do you guys prefer, bubble baths or showers? Uh, I'm a shower guy. <laughs> shower. Yeah, yeah. When it happens, it's a shower. Yeah, bubble baths are for couples. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it says it says it says the only two guys in the yeah. same room. <laughs> 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 that's that's funny. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> well, she's asking. <laughs> the bath is already drawn there. <laughs> there you go, Lady Red. All right. All right uh, next question: Ashley Grundy wants to know: Have you guys ever played in Canada? We have not played in Canada. As soon as we get our vaccination passports, we'll head right that way. Awesome. Uh, next question. How many instruments can you guys play? I think Steve plays the most because Steve can play a whole bunch. Maybe Stone might have it. I play, um, I play piano, uh, guitar, bass, and cello. Uh, we're, we're, we're close. Um, uh, um, guitar, bass, a little bit of piano, drums, and horn. So... Yeah, just guitar and bass. Yeah. <laughs> just guitar for me. I'm I'm a frustrated drummer. I always wanted to be a drummer, but <laughs> my parents bought me a guitar instead. So, <laughs> you no can use a guitar with headphones. That's why. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next question: uh, Megan and Ashley want to know what are your favorite horror movies. Oh. Um. I like uh, Hellraiser uh, for for Hellraiser, and I'm a big fan of uh, The Exorcist, and I um, those are my two favorite. Um, I don't have a favorite. I have a hard time with horror movies. <laughs> Steve, Steve's a little squeamish. <laughs> no, just, there's there's no horror movie that that I could watch and believe. <laughs> I just I, think, uh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite horror movie. Right. I'm, I might have to go with the Exorcist or Amityville Horror. You know the old the classics. You know, I got to go with uh, with the original Halloween. Oh yeah, Michael Myers. You know that that in the that in the original Texas Chainsaw. Those are those are probably my my favorite too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those could kind of sort of almost happen too. You know. Yeah, yeah, and you know when you're when you're when you're 13 years old watching Halloween for the first time, every single window's got fucking Michael Myers in it. And you, you know, 
losing your fucking mind and you can't sleep for a couple of days. It's like, yeah, that's that's a good movie. I like that one. Phantasm, I will say Phantasm, is Phantasm was great. But yeah. I will say Rob Zombie did a fucking amazing job recreating the 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 spookiness of of Michael Myers and the guy yeah. that plays Michael Myers in uh in that series of the movies he had the walk down he had the size he had the eyes for it and I just you know it, it, to me yeah. it's the boogeyman that's always been cool yeah e- even the kid man even the kid that yeah him. yeah the zombie the, the rob zombie films are all pretty amazing but you t- when you go to like all time favorites, I think we just screw the eye screw skew er- earlier than that. But you know what zombie, what Rob Zombie's doing is amazing. Yeah. All right. Next question: Ashley wants to know what are you guys uh, wearing? Boxers or briefs or nothing? <laughs> Depends. 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 <laughs> Depends. Oh, fuck. <laughs> They're wearing actual actual depends. <laughs> <laughs> I wear boxers, you know. Uh, the, it depends on how tight the jeans are. <laughs> it's totally metal to sh- just shit your pants, you know. Like, you just keep going. You can keep going. Yeah, you never rock. You shit your pants on stage, man. <laughs> we don't stop. We don't stop at all. We just keep going. Go on Gotta stage with going. the flu. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds that reminds me of uh, of an interview uh, I did with uh, Eric Wagner from Trouble a long time ago. I asked him what was the craziest thing he ever seen on on a stage, and what he told me was that whenever they were touring with Pantera, he said Dimebag had they had fucking eaten some kind of fucking uh, some kind of Mexican food, and it had fucked them up really bad, and. Dimebag was out there on stage doing a show and he had to shit really bad and they couldn't stop the show and they brought him out a bucket and he actually sat in the bucket and fucking shit while playing a solo and just never stopped, man. It just went on. <laughs> that's that's wild right there. That's crazy. There you go. <laughs> that solo that solo was the shit, man. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, next question. Lady Red wants to know, what's one of your most favorite shows that you have seen? Oh, you actually just mentioned it. For me, I got to see the uh, the White Zombie Trouble Pantera show. Uh, <laughs> that tour was fucking great, and that that definitely ranks up there as, as one of my favorites. Probably that and, like, an early Iron Maiden you know, one of the, one of their earlier tours, I saw them a million fucking times, so I can't remember which one, but yeah. they were amazing. You know, back in the day when you had you know, stage shows where you had five foot four Dio fighting a dragon, you know, with lasers, those were fucking cool shows. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I gotta say, uh, for me, it was uh, Max's good friends with Anthrax, and we, w- we went, this is what the Clash of the Titans tour when it was it was uh, Anthrax, Megadeth, and Slayer, and they would alternate every night who was headlining, and we hung out. I think it was New York, Philly, uh, Connecticut, hung out with them. But what I what I'm really getting at is Allison Chains was the opener, and they did 30 minutes every night and blew just blew doors. They had no support. They were just you know they were changing their strings in the. And you know, and, and the cardboard tables, whatever, for the catering, and, and they'd go out, and it was, you know, four nights of just thirty minutes of Alice in Chains, and they were just on fire. Yeah, you know, um, I'd say uh, definitely Iron Maiden. What? Yeah. All, all seven of them. All seven <laughs> times I saw them, they were all my favorite. Uh, most recently, the lot like uh, the All Hope Is Gone uh, Slipknot tour with Paul and and Joey with Coheed and Trivium opening was pretty pretty badass. Um, that was a really great show. I'm uh, a Slipknot fan. Sorry. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All right, next question. Uh, Mike from Grave Huffer wants to know, what is the weirdest backstage or bathroom encounter at a show? I can't, I, I can't divulge that information. Yeah. <laughs> under, under, under penalty of law, I can't divulge that information. <laughs> let's, go, let's, let's say that I've, I've walked into uh, a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, a, a lot of uh, stick situations involving uh, two people. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was the most polite way I've ever heard anybody say I've walked in on people fucking before. That was great. It's, it's especially especially nice when it's your uh, bandmates. You know, you yeah, in, uh, it's fun. last thing you ever want to see. You know, somebody's ass bouncing. <laughs> Horrible. Oh yeah. Uh, next question: uh, What was the worst experience ever on the stage? Oh. The the string breaking incident. String Michael. breaking. We 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 were playing, and literally like not thirty seconds into the first song, uh, the the singer takes his mic stand and swings it, and it breaks Michael's strings. <laughs> And then we're all just sitting there like, oh, this is, this is, it was at a time when we didn't have multiple guitars. So we had to wait to get the string re put on. And <laughs> that wasn't too much fun. Yeah, bring, a, bring a spare guitar always. Yeah, always yeah. have a spare guitar. <laughs> spare shit. Bass. Yeah, shit, shit blowing up. Um, you know, you, you got to think really fast. And, uh, I've had, you know, amplifiers go out on me and blow up on me on stage. Um, after, after the whole thing that happened with Dimebag, uh, it got, it got weird because, you know, we were all playing in those same clubs and it's true. you, you start looking out into the audience and wondering, you know, fuck man is, you know, is somebody, is, is there somebody in the audience here that's going to, decide to jump up on stage and do something fucking stupid. And, you know, it got to a point to where there's somebody on the crew who's, who's packing, or you've got something inside your amp behind you that you can get to just because of how much of a fucking asshole this guy was deciding to jump up on stage and do something. And that was, that was a weird, scary fucking time because, yeah. you know, it, it proved between that and the whole thing that happened with great white, you know, it proved that shit that is completely out of your control that you have absolutely nothing to fucking do with can come into a situation and fuck everything up in, in the worst possible way. So that was a really weird time to get on stage after that, after both of those incidents. Yeah. I remember right after that happened, I was at a, I was, I went to a clutch show and, and I had a Pantera shirt on, and I was fucking drunk out of my mind, and I was just having a good time, and I was in the crowd, and I made my way up to the front, and I was trying to get up on the on the gate to use it as leverage to, like, jump myself backwards and sort of crowd surf. And when I did that, the fucking security freaked out, no. man. They grabbed me, and they fucking, they, they took me out, man. They, they used my head as a battering ram to open the fucking doors and threw me out <laughs> on the street. No kidding, man. And I, I was like, fuck man. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. It, it, like, it's, they were not that's, playing. No. And, and you know, such a huge part of, of this type of music is crowd interaction, you know, yeah. and, and wanting people to jump up on stage and stage dive and mosh and have a good time and get their, get their aggressions out and, and everything mm -hmm. like that. But again, you don't, you never fucking know, you know, and the, the, what happened with Randy when he was overseas and or was it Prague, I think it was or whatever, where he pushed that dude off the stage right. and, and the dude ended up dying and they tried holding him accountable yeah. for it. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm fucking, you know, three feet, two feet, one feet away from, you know, all of these people. And again, after what happened, you don't know if one of them, you don't know how good the security is in the club. You don't know whether they've checked them when they're coming in the door you know, this guy's going to fucking blow up the entire building or just shoot a few people, but you're, you're not going to take that chance. Hell yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, Vicky wants to know, has anyone ever thrown dirty panties at you guys on stage? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Never clean. Never. <laughs> Never they, they've got a little... Never still have the price tag on them. Yeah. They're always, uh, you know, <laughs> It's always a disco box. 
<laughs> the no tags allowed to her. Right. Little, little cottage cheese happening. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, man. So, so, uh, so, tell us, man, what's coming up next for you guys? You, you, you're working on. Uh, you've got the new record that's going to be coming out. Do you have a tentative date for that, or it's just? We are going to start recording it in in earnest in May. We're still putzing around with uh, some ideas, um, and we're planning to. So, we're, we're our target is for May to start recording. And uh, depending on what your schedule is, uh, he's going to mix it again. And Matt, we're basically going to go back and do the record again with Chris, have York mix it. Uh, we're talking, we're trying to get the, the gang all back together. So we're hoping that we'll be, we'll start in May and we'll be done hopefully by July or August at the latest. And, Maybe sometime in the beginning of the year, you know, either at the end, of, probably the beginning of next year, it'll come out and we'll be able to uh, have a, you know, everything happen at the same time. Unlike with the, with the Hunter where we, we, we had it out digitally for a while until we could get a deal. And then Chris sort of came from the heavens and plucked us out of the, the trenches. Hell yeah. So for people out there listening right now, where can they go to find out more information about you guys? Uh, it's the band incursion, facebook.com, uh, the band incursion, uh, we're the band incursion on Instagram. Uh, and, uh, the ba- is it incursion, heavy metal and band camp? Yep. Uh, you can also go to incursion, heavy metal.com and there's links everywhere. Yeah. And then you can also go to no remorse records, uh, dot gr, uh, for stuff that, you know, from the label side of things. Oh yeah. And today is uh band camp's first Friday too. So you guys get a hundred percent, man. So anybody out there listening, man, you guys like what you hear, go to band camp and fucking support them, man. We thank you guys all for we thank you guys all for your questions and for your support. It's really amazing, and we can't wait to play for you guys as soon as we can. Awesome, absolutely man. awesome. Yeah, I'm about out of questions for you guys, but uh, is there anything else you want to let your fans know? Uh, just thank you uh, again. We like we we we've been pleasantly surprised and and very grateful for all your support and we we hope that uh when the record when the full length comes out you'll uh you'll dig what we're doing and and you'll know that we're kind of the real deal hell yeah well before i let you guys go can i get you to make us a station tag sure do you want one or four uh, whatever, whatever you guys want. Like, if you want to break it up or whatever, man, just say something like, uh, "This is Incursion, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio." This is Incursion, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man! Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, guys. Man, I really appreciate it. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more incursion for these motherfuckers so they can go crazy, all right? All right. Guys. Awesome. Thank Bye. you, man. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Cheers. Take care. Good. Bye. There you have it, folks. Incursion live on the motherfucking Zach Moonshine Show live on Metal Devastation motherfucking radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your fucking windows, put them in your front lawns, put them in your fucking neighbor's driveway. I don't give a fuck where you put them. Put them somewhere where people are going to hear this shit. Crank it the fuck up loud. This is incursion.